right, it is September the 26th, 2012. Um, and it's Wednesday, this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com um, where you'll find uh, interviews with uh, candidates that are gonna be on the ballots who are um, independent third party candidates. Uh, people that are in position to, uh, you know, help uh, take the country back, make things right, make the right decisions. Um, you, you know, you do have alternatives besides the lesser of two evils, the Republicans. The Democrats, uh, Eddie is uh, Eddie Rankin. Today we're talking with uh, uh, and interviewing. Um, he's running as a Libertarian for the U.S. House in District Number 30 in Texas. Um, his opponents are Eddie Johnson. Um, she's running on the Democrat Party, and, and Travis Washington Jr. on the Republican Party tickets. So. Um, so, Eddie, it's great to talk to you this Wednesday afternoon. And uh, if you could tell us a little bit about your district, number 30, and what got you motivated to be in the election, to run as a libertarian, um, or just not as a Republican or Democrat, and um, and uh, maybe just a little bit about yourself, sir. Sure, yes. thank you. Um, yeah, the, the district is in... Uh, Comprised uh, entirely uh, by Dallas County, so it's um, it's it's contained by Dallas County. It's um, uh, mo mostly southern and southwest Dallas County. Um, the uh, recently uh, recent redistricting in Texas, due to the um, increase in the number of members of Congress because of the population growth, it, it moved the boundaries of this district a little. Um, but um, Eddie Bernice Johnson is the current. Uh, Congresswoman, she's um, served 20 years in Congress, and this will be her 20. If she is reelected, she will have served 22 years representing this district. Um, the uh, I'm sorry, what was your your second question? Yeah, uh, just um, a, a little bit. Uh, that well, that's I mean, what got you motivated this year yeah. specifically, and just a little bit about uh, you know, just kind of a brief summary, like a brief biographical summary. You bet, sure. Um, well. You know, I, I've been uh, sort of on the sidelines of politics for a long time. I, I, I felt that I was an educated citizen. I paid attention to politics, and I really found myself uh, not really aligned with either party, but more concerned with the individuals that were running for offices. And so ideologically, it didn't really align with the Republicans or the Democrats. I, I discovered... Uh, in the late 90s, as I was in the middle of an entrepreneurial venture, um, libertarian thinking, and, um, and, and started to investigate the Libertarian Party a little back then, although I, I sort of remained independent. I actually never voted in any primaries uh, here in Texas until, um, because I was registered as an independent um, until, I think, the 2000 election. And... Um, but being a being an observer of politics and actually knowing, having met quite a few prominent politicians um, over the years from my business experience and through that, and I was fortunate to be in a position to meet people like John McCain and and um, the both uh, both President Bushes and um, uh, many many other prominent politicians, um, felt that. Uh, you know, I was as I've watched the last couple of decades, felt pretty clear to me that the Republicans and Democrats were essentially one party, and um, uh, I, uh, particularly in the last uh, eight years, the last four years of the Bush administration, and the last four and the first four years of the Obama administration, saw very little difference between the two parties. But obviously, clearly, I'm um, uh, disturbed by the direction the country was taking. So I decided that it was appropriate to get involved more directly, and um, I, you know, don't really have political aspirations. I, I mean, I, I, I'd hope to win this office to go there for a couple of terms to change things, um, but not to be a career politician. Yeah, and if, um, but well, I yeah. really align with the Libertarian Party um, philosophy and its position on, on its platform on on the issues. So. Well, the platform, um, you, you know, you, you actually, yeah, you have that on your website, um, right. Ed Rankin for Congress .com, and 
Um, and and the, the platform is pretty simple, um, and uh, it just has, um, uh, there is a, um, a list of uh, 10, I think, planks on the libertarian platform. And, right. Uh, and they're all things that pretty much, um, you know, I think most people could agree on. They're, they're more about, uh, I think, principles, and, um, uh, and, and so... Uh, there definitely is a disturbing trend this country has been going with the Republicans and the Democrats. And, uh, you know, you could argue that on their platforms that there are some good things um, on, on each, uh, from civil liberties to, 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 to you know, uh, due process and et cetera and, and free markets. and But the, the good things that we never get from them in policy and actions, they're just on the platforms. And, right. and the things that... They, they differ that uh, we disagree, that we don't like. We, we get um, all of that. And uh, yeah, exactly. it, it, it's, it's such a vicious, vicious um, thing. It's like holding out, um, you know, peace and prosperity in front of your hand so people will take it and then just all of a sudden pulling back that hand and then showing out the other hand real quick that has a knife in it that just cuts you. And, um, Correct. And, and that's what they do, and they do it with a smile. They do it with their, you, you know, packaged uh, plastic type of um, aura that they that, that they portray, and, and they're just a, you know, if you listen to them, they're talking heads. They're talking about all these policies and details, which are important, and, and there's so many of them. I mean, we're reading bills that are thousands of pages long. Um, they, it, they, a lot of them, um, you, they don't believe in transparency. They, 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 they're secretive. The government's more secretive than it ever is. I mean, be, talking about Correct. being an informed um, electorate, um, which is necessary for a democracy. Um, I mean, we can't make informed choices if we don't know the facts. In fact, are, are you, have you been in and are you going to be in any debates against Eddie and Travis? Um, well, none, none have been. I've actually proposed that we have a debate, but I haven't received a response from either of the candidates at this point. But um, I just put that forth last week, so I hope to try to um, push that a little bit. I mean, they uh, try to get us, like, um, distracted with, um, uh, you, you know, the particulars of the Obamacare, the particulars of energy policy, the particulars of foreign policy, the particulars of the environment, education. And they're they're missing always the the big picture. Um, uh, it, it's I, I mean there's you know what why are you running and uh, I mean what is the vision I, I mean what's your platform I mean I know the libertarian but well let's go through foreign policy and um, and I guess that has to do with the budget because our foreign policy military spending is about you know a quarter of the budgets and, uh, and oh yeah I think we spend more on our military budget than the next. 30 nations combined, um, you know, it, you know, I think that um, you know, Congressman Ron Paul did a lot of good sort of educating people about some of these important issues. And, you know, um, I think that if you go back to the Constitution and the, the, in the early days of this country, you know, we really maintained a non-interventionist approach to foreign policy, which is where I believe we should be. You know, I think uh, Congressman Paul said in one of the debates, said, you know, we've got thousands of people in the State Department. We should st use some of them. Um, I, you know, I think that, um, you know, if the United States, um, you know, I wonder sometimes what would happen if the United States became the first responder to the rest of the world for natural disasters, how, our, how we might be viewed by the rest of the world. I'd, I'd much rather see us spend our dollars becoming becoming the, the first responder to the world and, and helping people when they needed us and, and with, no, with no conditions applied uh, than spending trillions and trillions of dollars on defense. You know, we confuse defense with, 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 um, with the military and spending money on the military and having hundreds of military bases scattered all around the world and intervening in the internal affairs of other nations. Um, and uh, President Obama... You know, won the Nobel Prize, yet he has probably authorized more drone strikes, and we have more uh, military actions underway and in America, in the United States today, in the world that we're involved with all over North Africa and the Middle East than we had, I think, in any, any other administration in, in our history. So, 
um, I think that you know we need to if national defense means bringing people home and defending our nation and our interests around the world don't don't justify us having 180 military installations I think we have now all over the globe well they yeah, are 900 um, installations <coughs> in over 130 bases uh, okay. something like that or 800 installations uh, plus 800 to 900 and over 130 bases um, uh, and uh, like like you said, just even being able to realize um, and, and bring that up as a topic, I mean, you can come to your own conclusions. A lot of people say people that point out the problems don't have any solutions, but, I mean, that's not true. I mean, you have to know what the problems are first and address them and realize and recognize that that's a problem. And, and, and if that doesn't make you think of immediate solutions, then, um, then you know, some people are just incompetent to see that. I mean, the Republicans... Um, Right now, they, they would have booed uh, Dwight Eisenhower off the stage yes. if he was running uh, in their primaries. They would have booed George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. They would have yes. booed all of them. I mean, they wouldn't be welcome in the Republican Party. And the Democrats, you know, they're, they're you know, the chicken hawk Republicans, I want to add to that, um, because a lot of them, you know, that are, you know, getting five deferments like Dick Cheney did. And, and, yes, um, exactly. and the Democrats, they're just, uh, you know, just as much chickens um they might not be the chicken hawks but but they're so chicken of being scared of being called like uh y y you know weak Bob on defense, defense. Right. and, and right. so so they end up like stealthily you know increasing the budget more i mean if we just brought back our budget to like just 2003 levels we'd cut the you know um, military budget in half Right. Um, so it, it's it's just yeah insane spending. It's it's going to destruction. I mean, we need to defend ourselves against you know these special interests, um, Halliburton, uh, Blackwater, or Z. I mean, right. these all these companies getting these special contracts, and and perhaps we shouldn't um, be the world's biggest arms dealer. Maybe we shouldn't sell some of these weapons to some of these foreign countries that will end up. Um, you, you, you know, I guess just fighting, and so they can buy more weapons. Yeah, I think we had uh, what uh, ten thousand. Um heat-seeking missiles uh, that are now in the hands of, uh, they say now, I guess, are in the hands of Al-Qaeda because of <laughs> the missiles that we left and, the, and and one of the countries that we were occupying. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, and also, too, I think one of the concerns I have is the growing presence of the police state in the United States. You know, Obama has probably done more damage to civil rights than any Republican that I can recall. And, um, uh, his reauthorization of the Patriot Act, he even strengthened it, and he signed the National Defense Authorization Act on New Year's Eve day when no one was looking. After saying, suggesting at first that he would veto it, he signed it. Yeah, uh, the, it was quite deep. People didn't all get this. why he was trying to. He wasn't vetoing it because he thought it. He he made it seem like he was vetoing it because it, like he was going to, threatening to veto it because it violated civil liberties. The fact is, he's the one that wanted to keep those provisions. Um, I think it was like the ten twenty, ten twenty one, or something like that. Ten twenty two. He's. Uh, I mean, every year there's a National Defense Authorization Act, but this specific one in 2012, like you said, that was signed on New Year's Eve. Um, after everyone left the building, um, uh, he, he basically, um, uh, I mean, you know, it, it allows indefinite detention of America. It, right. It's complete lawlessness. It gets rid of the rule of law. The rule of law is due process. The rule of law right. is having a jury of your peers, knowing right. your charges, accusers against you, a fair trial, um, and uh, et cetera, and due process. And, and this gets rid of all that. I mean, what does that equal? That equals anarchy. It equals... Um, no rule of law. I mean, there's lots of, you're right, the homeland security is, is military. I mean, the police look more Correct. like military nowadays. Mm -hmm. That budget, the homeland security department, I mean, it, it's... Uh, well, if you talk to local police departments, what's happening is the funding that came with this whole Patriot Act um, and all the government funding that was uh, intended for national security to strengthen local and state um, police uh, organizations came with, a, as it always does, by the, from the federal government with a great deal of, of uh, restrictions and requirements. So you see things like, some very simple things actually, but even in a city like Dallas, you see police cars being painted from white and blue to black. You see police officers' uniforms converting from blue to black. So what does that suggest? The black uniforms, of course, are reminiscent of Nazi Germany. Um, and, and, I mean, it's very simple, simple, subtle things, but I've talked to some 
um, police officers around the country, and you know they're they're seeing these changes at the local level, but they're being driven a lot by the requirements that come along with the extra funding that came. So, um, you know, military uh, local police departments are being provisioned almost like paramilitary units today. Yeah, the requirement of the funding is a big thing, and that's a big thing not just in that department, but many other departments. That's what keeps Correct. this whole cycle of uh, debt going, and, and each department needs to increase their quotas, so that way they can get more money next year. It, it's, it's The incentives are backwards. Um, police departments aren't supposed to have quotas, but sometimes they act like they are running on quotas, and uh, it should be a good thing when, you know, if crime decreases um, and, and they're arresting less people. We do have the highest incarceration rate than China, Russia, Iran, yeah. Syria, I mean, then the entire world. Um, so we have the biggest military budget. Um, we have, uh, 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 you know, uh, our Constitution. I mean, that's what unites us all. Um, that's what everyone claims are constitutional rights. That has been um, violated. Um, Eddie Johnson had a no vote on that, um, decided not to vote against that. It would have helped to have another no vote against, um, you know, the people who were voting against the Constitution. And, um, I mean, this Homeland Security apparatus, it sounds like almost like, you know, the fatherland, um, you, you know, for to the security. Um, sure. And, uh, yeah, it, yeah you're, it, instead of peace officers, I mean, they look, you, you know, very militaristic, and um, that does go to psychology, and they don't look like they're defending the republic, rather some kind of a uh, empire. And um, so, sure. are we a republic? Still, I mean, we're we're in the are we in the last days of the republic, or are we on the new renaissance of a uh, of the republic, or are we going to be an empire? Um, and uh, I don't think we want to go down that. Um, you know, voracious um, appetite of an empire where, you know, we just uh, eat ourselves, um, you, you know, just kind of like in a vicious circle. It's, uh, I mean, people need to be free to have their full potential. They need to be fully informed for democracy to survive. What about, you know, another war that has goes to the highest incarceration rates? I guess, you know, once they stop fighting people overseas, they're going to turn the barrels of the guns over here for the people sure. who will follow those kind of orders. And, well, um, we, yeah, we, you know, in Texas we have, um, I think, uh, about 70% of the prison population in Texas are minority, young minority males who are there uh, for nonviolent drug violations. Um, and, and we have uh, prison, uh, privatized prisons, uh, whose corporations are now lobbying state legislators for stronger laws so that they can put more people in prison and they can charge the state more money. <laughs> I mean, it, it really is getting to be absurd. Oh, yeah. Um, no, there, there were, um, that's, that's true. That's, um, I, I mean, um, they're profiting. That's corporate welfare, by the way, too. Correct. Um, and, and, Absolutely. Uh, and it costs about, you know, thirty to 50000 to to hold these people. Um, right. Also, you're splitting families um, that that's right. um, for victimless crimes. I mean, we have, right. I think, about 2 million people incarcerated. We, we have the highest rate by ratio and by the actual uh, hard numbers. So right. a lot of people estimate about half of that, or 40 percent, um, is uh, drug-related charges. Right. And uh, I, I, so if, if there were um, about 200,000 slaves that were freed after the Civil War, um, the Emancipation Proclamation, about 200,000. Right. If we freed the amount of people that are in there for victimless crimes, you could say, I mean, this would be a, even a bigger emancipation than, than even that. And, and some of these people are slaves because in those private prisons, they have to work for like, you know, I don't know the names of the, some of the companies, but some of the companies hire the private prison to, to, to hire these people for, like they work for like, you know, a dollar an hour and stuff like Correct. that. And if they don't work, I mean, what would you think, I mean, then they might, you know, have, um, you, you know, solitary confinement or something. I'm sure Correct. stuff like, it's not hard to imagine at least stuff like that going on. Well, some, some of the, the private, uh, for-profit, independent uh, businesses that are in the, free, the open in the, in the open market, the free, the quasi-free market, have had to actually shut down operations to lay people off because of the competition from the low-wage um, work that's being done inside our prisons. I mean, how absurd is that? I mean, and, and anyone who's, I mean, you're not going to hear these issues. I mean, if, if they... 
if you did debate them, I hope you could just, you know, bring back the real issues. I mean, who cares about what they just asked you? I mean, right now we have like 200,000 people, at least, on um, the same amount of slaves that were freed after the Emancipation Proclamation. Right. Possibly more um, that, uh, you know, we could free um, families well, that your, could be reunited. Point, I, mean, I mean, to your point, the impact on, on low-income minority families, the, the male is predominantly in those scenarios likely that at least if not this primary uh, financial uh, contributor to the family, but certainly should be uh, at least a, a major factor in the family's financial well-being gets taken away. Oh, yeah, they could lose um, their mortgage. It, I mean, it, tears, it just it completely it, it tears up uh, African-American families primarily here in Texas. Oh, it's cruel and unusual um, punishment. I mean, I mean absolutely. It, going behind bars, getting your freedom taken away. Who, who knows what else is going on? I mean, probably, you know, tons of nasty stuff. Um, and uh, it, it, it's just, it, it, you know, for this never-ending, unenforceable, um, we already tried prohibition before. Um, at least they passed an amendment when they did that, and then they got rid of it because it was such a bad idea. This is the exact same thing. It doesn't mean that doing violent people who are in there with victim crimes shouldn't still be in there. It's just the victimless crimes. And, uh, Correct. Plus, Plus, I mean, it's a huge crop. We import um, billions of um, uh, dollars worth of hemp every year from Canada, from Australia, from a lot of the countries in the Pacific. Um, they grow it. They grow hemp like it's going out of style. And then they send it to us. And then we, you know, unload the hemp. And then we, you know, make stuff out of it. Like um, we can right. make ethanol. We can make clothing, we can make um, foods um, with the seeds, we can make uh, plastics. Actually, in some of the, um, uh, there's some car companies that are having resins that are made from hemp. Uh, Henry Ford, his first car had, um, it, it had not only um, heptane, the ethanol, to, to run uh, the car with fuel, but it also had the solid um, uh, you know, instead of metal on the outside, it, it like had a hemp trunk, a hemp doors, and stuff like that. It was kind of like a fiberglass car, and it was strong. And um, so, uh, so you, I guess you're against, um, you, you know, the status quo on, on the drug war. Is that right? Oh, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we just need to stop all these wars. I mean, just those three things that... right right there. I mean, we just talked about the drug war, military spending, civil liberties. I mean, if that was the only things you could accomplish, if that was it, I, I mean, um, that would change the world right there. That would cut the budget um, in, at least in half and, uh, sure. and, and pros possibly produce new revenue because of uh, new industries and, and, and more freedom. I mean, right there, I mean, that that's a platform but anything else we forgot to mention i mean we talked about foreign policy we talked about civil liberties we talked about you know the drug war specifically and um and uh, I, I mean that right there would change the world that's a boldness that that we you know the peep, someone who's going to be principled enough to stand up for that um you, you know we'll probably do a good job but what what else what are some other issues that we didn't mention yet sir that you well we, we, haven't, we haven't really talked about the economy but i'm definitely um um in uh, in favor of um ending the federal reserve banking system um you know this this the yeah, one that when they did an audit bailed you, you, you know lent 15 trillion dollars to yeah. banks all across oh, yeah. the world and and, and their yeah. crony friends um, at the expense of um, you, you know hardworking competitors to those banks right well that money that's being given to the major banks so they're the major banks that actually all own the Federal Reserve Banking Bank uh, most people don't understand the Federal Reserve Bank is not an institution of the United States government it is a private bank. <laughs> Yeah, they just make money out of thin air. Like what their secret trick is that most people don't know is they they get that loan at like zero point something percent interest, and what they Correct. immediately do is just buy treasury bonds with it that immediately pay them back like two or three percent, and, exactly. and so they're they're in a no lose situation. Exactly it's, it's, right. it's free money, and um, exactly. it, it's completely there couldn't be anything more free money than that. So when they well, pay it back. They they're not paying it. They they get to keep that interest which they didn't earn. Correct. Yeah, it's a, it, it's it, it's absurd. And I think as Henry Ford said uh, that uh, I'll paraphrase his quote, but he he was quoted as saying um, that the American people ever really fully understood how the banking system in this country works, they would be a revolution. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, and just using the term banking system, I mean, it's it's. I mean, if we just call it a banking system, then then you know it might not be the you know as well defined as it could be. I mean, it's just it's a system that's for sure, and it's transferring wealth. It's a way to dilute wealth. It's a way to take um, property from people um, in, in, in kind of a gradual, slow, systematic way where they don't know what's happening. And um, and it's not like any of these things are going towards good. They're going towards people who fail at business, like the bailouts that that, that neither the Occupy Wall Street people nor the Tea Party wanted. Um, it's a direct... Uh, you know, slap in the face to, to the people's um, wants and needs and, and interests and um, and like so many other things uh, that people don't want um, that they just continuously do. They're asking for it. They're asking for you to stop electing them. They just don't know how to do it. So like um, because of their immature ways, they're just doing everything that could possibly um, upset the electorate. The electorate's just not getting it yet, but maybe they will. There is a 10% approval rating of Congress this year, and um, so, I mean, um, uh, get rid of Federal Reserve. Do you think we should have a private uh, tr treasury, um, you know, or public or competing currencies, or, yeah, you know, how, how should... Well, I'm certainly in favor of competing currencies. I, I think that that's something that's a, something that should be allowed. Um, uh, as far as a uh, you know, honestly, I, I haven't formed an opinion yet about whether the, the government itself should be in the banking business. I know there was a lot of debate among. Well, you could have that along as as long as you had competing currencies. I mean, Correct. you know, there's something that like you, you know, it would that would be better. You know, it would be better than um, what we have now, at least, Correct. and it might satisfy both sides of the aisle in a sense. Um, and. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's something to think about. So, I mean, you know, um, and and I guess you, you know you might need to get a little more information. Find out. I mean, first we need to, uh, you know, shine the lights on everything that's going Correct. on. I mean, right. so anything else besides economics or? Um, well, I think we've covered uh, covered the major topics. Uh, I would uh, the only thing I would encourage uh, people who listen to this uh, interview that to do would be to. Um, vote for Governor Gary Johnson, the Libertarian Party candidate for president. Um, a lot of people aren't fully aware of this fact, but um, if Governor Johnson receives 5% or more of the popular vote in November, the Libertarian Party will receive uh, more than $90 million in funds from the voluntary contributions that taxpayers have made to the federal matching funds um, uh, program and that is a, enough money to mount a viable third party if, fund. If all the people that supported Ron Paul voted for Gary Johnson, that ninety million dollars, that five percent would be almost guaranteed. Correct. Yeah. Excuse um, me one, let me catch sure. I gotta hold on one sec. Hey, good. Can I call you right back? Uh okay. Uh hold on, let me write that. Uh, I'm it's, uh, it's not, I'll just give it to me real quick. All right. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Thomas. Uh, that's right. This is crunch time. This is like where we have about um, a little more than 30 days left in this campaign. And so we're talking to someone who's uh, campaigning right now who has put himself in the position in case we do decide that we want to pull the emergency break called the House of Representatives, that two-year emergency break where every two years we can make a difference. I think the the real revolution, like as people say, will not be televised. It, it, it's um, not, not on, you know, the the, the lamestream uh, me media, but it will, I think, I mean, the, the path of least resistance that I see, and I'm just trying to be logical here, is, is the House of Representatives. Um, I mean, maybe we can get double-digit numbers this year, um, if not more, but, uh, I mean, that seems like a realistic goal, maybe more in 2014. That $90 million certainly will help in 2014. Correct. And um, so wh who's some of your favorite characters in history or modern day, just people that besides yourself, um, that, uh, you know, that, that you, that's been on your mind, um, for whatever reason. And, and if you wouldn't well, mind sharing with us and, and why, sir. Well, it, is I've, um, really started to pay closer attention to what was going on politically. I've become, 
I, I would love to. Nothing would please me more than to be able to, to sit down and have a conversation with Thomas Jefferson. I just think the man uh, was brilliant. And, um, and to be able to, to meet and, and have some dialogue with the founders of the Constitution, the founding fathers of this country, would just be in, an enormous joy, I think. Um, so I, I think, um, you know, throughout history, um, if you look at those, those, those men were incredibly opportunistic. They were well-educated, brilliant people who devised something that was truly unique and experimental and had the courage to um, fight for it and to, to debate and to, to come together and to collaborate to create something that was quite unique and beautiful in that human history. You know, the thing that concerns me probably as much as anything is that in the history of human history, the drug human history, freedom and liberty has been the exception, not the, not the norm. Tyranny really is the norm throughout history. Tyrannical uh, monarchies, tyrannical fascist socialist governments. The United States was an experiment that has produced incredible wealth, incredible accomplishments, achievements for the world. And I think um, we, I was nothing would please me more than for us to move back towards the constitutional government that the framers had put in place. Yeah, this is pretty much the freest, I mean, documented society that we've had since, like, almost, you know, ancient Greece. I, I, right. I mean, and and right. even then, like, you know, they still killed you know, Plato, um, or, or Aristotle, like, like they still had, you know, so it wasn't even perfect then, but, but at least they had, you know, some kind of Republic. And, um, and so, um, I mean, and, and so if people are looking in a short sighted way, the, the, the kind of things that the Republicans, Democrats are presenting, um, in their debates, um, you know, they won't even touch the drug policy, which would, enormously affect this country. I mean, it would sure. shut down a lot of... It wouldn't just have a positive effect. It would also have a negative effect against some of these, you know, criminals um, and, and kind Absolutely. of reduce a lot of their um, revenue stream. And, 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 and the foreign policy, I mean, if... You know, we could, you know, almost slice like a third of our deficit on this, you know, this 43 cents of every dollar that we're spending. We, I mean, a lot of that could be cut, um, you know, with the military budget, and we'd still have, like, you know, more spending and the best military. And, um, and the civil liberties, I don't think people consider how that affects the economy, but um, I assure you, it, it, having, it, it's, it's the most fundamental thing to it. It, it, it goes to, ha you know, you have to have confidence in the dollar because it, it's honest. It, if it, it's just like nowadays, no one doesn't think like the stock market isn't rigged or, you know, I hear a lot of people saying that. If, if everyone thinks something is rigged, you, no, no one's going to participate anymore. It, it's, right. so people need to see in the bigger picture our civil liberties is that confidence um, it, that is the very root of it. It might not be easy to see because it's such down there in the foundation and the roots, but actually right. it, it's, it's the most fundamental thing to an, a, a free market economy or, or a free economy um, or just being free people. Um, you know, I, I, like Ron Paul said, I mean, I'd rather be free even if it was um, less uh, prosperous, but, but it's not that way, um, you know. So, um, so are you going to – any campaign event soon um, that people can catch? Yet and 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 um, you know and uh, and besides going to um uh, here here's uh, your website again it's uh, Ed E D Rankin R A N K I N four F O R Congress dot com. Uh, we we don't have thank you uh, we don't have any events scheduled yet but I'm hoping that we'll have a debate with the other two uh, candidates here in the next few weeks we'll see if they'll respond to my request <laughs> yeah I would make that an issue um, and yeah. uh, because um, it, 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 I mean how I guess I mean at least she has somewhat of a case I mean being there 22 years the other Republican doesn't have any case at all and uh, and and even if it, it, she, she claims you know she, people know where she stands uh, I mean um, it basically is where where does she stand compared 
to her competitors, which could make a, I mean, the whole object is to get the most qualified person. I sound maybe a little angry, and I think I sh should be even more angry. I think people need to be, a, 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 like, I agree. A, a calm, I agree. calm collective, but it, it's, we're, it's slow to anger, um, prudent, but at the same time, I mean, eventually it, it, there has to be some anger, and uh, um, so, um, so, a, sh a shot heard around the world. What will cause that is um, an unprecedented amount of independence and third-party candidates elected to Congress, and, and it will help out future years as, as well, Absolutely. as you pointed out to. So, I mean, this could, you know, this could be a, a streak of about 10 years, but this yeah. is this is a path. Um, and uh, that we can use to take back our country, and it's one that was provided in the Congress. I mean, just simply, folks, the House of Representatives, let's take the House back. I mean, the Senate, too, where we can, and governorships, everything, but, um, I mean, the House is definitely a prime strategy for the people. It's the people's house, and, and, and it's directly almost right there with us, and, and I, that's within reach. And, Ed, it has been a pleasure. I will say thank you. goodbye to you after this conversation. Thank you for, uh, well, thank you for being willing to, um, you know, just like you said, you were willing to be in the debates, um, uh, to spend the time to, you know, beyond just sound bites and, uh, and, and really test you on some of these issues um, uh, that have to, you know, some of these fundamental issues. I mean, um, People might not think of the fundamental issues. They want more of the specifics nowadays. But but we're at a time once again where uh, I mean the, the fundamentals um, you know do need to be uh, kind of um, reviewed again. And uh, so um, I'll say goodbye to you. Thank you, Ed, and uh, appreciate your time, sir. And You're very welcome. Thank you.